number one which of the following are the base units of momentum so we have the formula force equals to change in momentum by time so the momentum will be force into time force is actually we know that f equals to ma so force will be equal to ma into t so the base unit of m is kg the base unit of a acceleration is meter per second square and the base unit of time is seconds so we will have kg meter second to the power minus one so the answer is a number two a liner is a particle accelerator it consists of drift tubes with potential difference pd applied between them the drift tubes increase in length so this is a quite repetitive question we need to know some information how the linac works so the linac has a series of tubes like this which increases in length and an electron passes through them it is accelerated by an electric field so in the linac the length of the tube increases this has a particular reason the polarity of the tube changes as the electron goes into a tube so that it gets accelerated so if the polarity does not change at the right time then the electron may get repelled so the rate at which the pd changes stays the same this means that the time spent in each tube is constant so since we know that speed equals to distance by time since the time spent in each d remains constant and the speed increases the distance must increase to keep the time spent in each d constant so if the time spent in each d is constant the alternating pd must also be constant the frequency at which it changes also has to be constant since this time is equal to 1 by f so since the time spent in each d remains constant the alternating pd frequency must also be constant so very high accelerating so a a very high accelerating pd can be used no the accelerating pd used can have a constant frequency right the particle acquires the same amount of energy in its cell this is not relevant to the question number d the time spent in each tube increases and the, as the length of the tube increases no the length of the tube increases but the time spent in each d remains constant so the answer is b number 3 a food mi mixture number 3 a food mixer has a blade which completes 15000 revolutions in a minute which of the following is the angular velocity of the blade in radians per second so radians per second is actually the angular velocity this is denoted by omega and omega equals to 2 pi by time period so 2 pi is one complete revolution so 15000 complete revolutions would be 2 pi into 15000s per minute may have meant 60 seconds so time will be 60 so 2 pi into 15000 divided by 60 is 1570 radians per second so the answer is c the de broglie wavelength associated with electrons used to study crystal structure is 2.8 into 10 to the power minus 10 which of the following is the speed of the electrons so so we have the de broglie wavelength and we have mass we have to find velocity so we know that p equals to mv so one formula linking the momentum and the de broglie wavelength is lambda equals to h by p p equals to mv So lambda would be equals to h by m v, where h is the Planck's constant. So when we put in the values, the lambda is this: 2.8 into 10 to the power minus 10 equals to h is 6.63 into 10 to the power minus 34. This is given at the end of the question paper. The mass of the electron is 19.11 into 10 to the power minus 31 into v. V is what we have to find out. So v is equals to 6. 6 into 10 to the power minus 24 divided by 2.8 into 10 to the power minus 10 into 9.11 into 10 to the power minus 31. So the answer that comes out is 2.6 into 10 to the power 6 meter per second. So the answer is B. Number five. A square coil of side length m has m turns. its plane is parallel to a magnetic field of mag magnetic flux density b which of the following is the flux linkage of with this coil 
So the Marxism says the, that the answer to this question is A. So whether or not we are finding anything, the flux linkage or the force being exerted on a current carrying conductor, you know, the formula that we have F equals to BIL, all of these have, all of these formulas are linked to sine theta. And this theta is the angle between the magnetic flux and the wire. For example, this is the wire and this is the um, magnetic field line. So this angle would be theta. So here in this question, it says that it is, its plane is parallel. So if this plane is parallel, then the sine theta, the value of theta would be zero. If this value of theta is zero, then the value of sine theta is zero. Since we know the sine graph, this looks something like this. It starts from zero, 180, 360. So when theta is zero, the sine, the sine theta value is also zero. So anything, the flux linkage, when the angle is zero, so anything into zero would be equal to zero. So the answer is A. A particle accelerator produces a beam of high energy protons. Which of the following statement describes the speed of proton as it passes through the accelerator? It increases uniformly. No, it does not increase uniformly since um, k equals to half mv square. If k increases uniformly, v square won't increase uniformly. Since the kinetic energy is proportional to the v square, not v. Number b, it never reaches the speed of light, right? b is the answer. Number c, it stops increasing when it reaches the speed of light. So if b is correct, c is not correct. Number d, it reduces as, at, as it approaches the speed of light. No, the speed does not decrease. Maybe perhaps the rate of change of speed decreases as it approaches the speed of light. So what the explanation, so when it reaches a uh, speed near to the speed of light, the speed does not increase anymore, but the energy increases. There is a sort of big brain thing that happens here. Since there is our equation equals to mc squared and k equals to a half mv squared, the, when the particle is in the accelerator, the energy keeps increasing. All the time, the energy keeps increasing. As it reaches the speed of light, the velocity does not increase, so the kinetic energy stops increasing. But the total energy of the proton increases. That increases by increasing the this energy when it is at relativistic speeds near to the speed of light. When at that time, when the when that energy increases, the mass increases. So when it reaches near to the speed of light, the mass starts to increase. So the answer is B. Number seven, a particle Y has kinetic energy E and momentum P. A second particle Z of the same mass Y has momentum 2P. Which of the following is the kinetic energy of Z? So we are given the momentum and mass of both Y and Z. We know, so if we compare the kinetic energy of Z to Y, if we find the ratio, then we can actually find the factor of Z at which the Y occurs. So let's assume the kinetic energy of Y as KEY, which is P squared by 2M, and the kinetic energy of Z as it has 2P, right? So 2P squared divided by same mass. So it this would remain as 2M. So we have 4P squared by 2M here. So if we actually compare the ratios, so this would be 4 p squared by 2m divided by p squared by 2m. The factor will be 4. So the kinetic energy of y would be 4 times that of z. So the answer will be a, 7a. Number 8. A resultant force of 10 newton acts on a particle of mass 0 0.2 kg for 30 seconds. The particle is initially at rest. Which of the following expressions give the velocity in meter per second of the particle after 30 seconds? So we have force, we have force, we have mass, we have time, and we have velocity. So mass and velocity is momentum, and an equation linking force, momentum, and time, it's actually F equals to change in momentum by time. Here force is 10, force equals to 0 0.2 into V, since P equals to MV, 
0 0.2 into v divided by 30 so v would be equal to 10 into 30 divided by 0 0.2 so 10 into 30 divided by 0 0.2 is this v which of the following is the name of process by which electrons are released from a heated filament ionization photoelectric effect relativistic effect and thermionic emission uh, the answer is d this question is quite repetitive the explanation is quite small we just have to know what the thermionic emission is it, it happens when the filament has such high temperatures that the electrons have enough energy so that they are released from the surface of an r mass m drives over a circular humpback bridge of radius r and with a constant speed v so this is a very interesting scenario it is on a humpback bridge let me add a picture to demonstrate so when it is at the top of the bridge its magnitude of the force exerted on the car by the bridge is given by so the reaction force would be mg minus mv square by r so when the car is at rest the reaction force will be equal to mg since this v would be equal to zero so the reaction force will be equal to mg but as the speed increases at point x as, as speed increases the centripetal force would increase so when this increases the centripetal force increases and mg stays constant the reaction force would start to decrease and as the speed is increasing it to the scenario will reach a point when this mv square by r would be greater than mg so at that point it will launch itself in the air and it would fall badly and can also cause an accident due to this I think I have a video, let me attach it.